Hello, I am starting late today. Uh, let me just check some last minute. We had technical difficulties. Ugh. So that is why I am late. Uh, da, 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 da. Everybody's walk, looking for their clicky link. I hope you're finding me. Eventually you will, just refresh. If you can't find me, you're not following my directions. I will wait a bit, see if more than my mother shows up. <laughs> I know, right? <sighs> anyway. Yeah, I'm on two devices now. Okay, so today, <laughs> roasted by my mom and it's not even 9.30. I was having technical difficulties getting connected and my mom said, it's too bad we don't have any computer nerds in our house. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, favorite kid mug. <sighs> See, I wouldn't be late if I hadn't been distracted with all the stuff I left open when I left my laptop last night. And I am looking at way too many computer, uh, computer quilt patterns to use up my scraps and I keep going back and forth on what I want to make. And then by the time I get to the end of the browsing, of all the links I had open, I forgot what it was I was going to use it for. So that was my evening, the eve of our anniversary, pre-anniversary. Um, so yeah, today is March 23rd, right? And I'm Andrea from the Quilting Shed in Hanwell, just outside of Fredericton, New Brunswick, in case you're watching this later and you have no clue who I am. Anyway, so today is my wedding anniversary. My husband, Ron, if you remember him. Mom, you remember that guy? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is, what is it, 2022. So it's 32 years of wedded bliss. I said that with a straight face. So 32 years, which is sort of like, man, eh, we should probably do something. Yeah, we should probably, I don't know, what, nap and watch TV together? Sounds good, which we do every night. So there's nobody I'd rather do nothing with. Uh, neato, nifty. So today, uh, one of the things I thought I would do is show you Ron's quilt quilts because... Some of you may not know this. Some of you, if you've been around from the early days... Um, once I really started getting into long arms and stuff, the way to get your, to get your husband to say, yeah, we can, we can afford a long arm. We'll, let's go buy one is to get him to go take the training too. And then he's like, man, this is fun. And suddenly, wow, it's a great idea. So yeah, he helped out in the early days when we were just starting our shop. Um, I still had a full-time job. He was semi, semi-retired. So he did a lot of, uh, quilt work. He was working on our house and stuff that we had. So he, in theory, had a lot of free time. Free time. He wasn't tied up in work is what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> I got it connected, baby. Mom said it's too bad we don't have computer nerds in the house. Yeah. I know, right? Um, so anyway, I'm going way, way back here. Five years, eight years? I don't know anymore. No, not eight years. So He's the one that usually did a, a lot of uh, maintenance on the long arm, and uh, I showed him how to quilt. He knew how to sew some, but we had lots of machines in the house and lots of space for it. So he started quilting and making his own quilts because, I mean, it's fun. We're not going to lie. And when I had my little shop open in the other house, um, he would help wait on customers because like I said, I still had a full-time job. Not that I had to go anywhere because I work remotely, but sometimes I got caught up in uh, work that I couldn't leave the computer. So, and then when we decided that, yeah, maybe this quilt shop thing was really going to work out and I was going to quit my job and do the shop full-time, he went back to work full-time, which meant he has less time for quilting. Poor guy, he hasn't. And the long arm's been tied up in customer quilt, so it's been quite some time since he's actually uh, done more than a slight adjustment on it. So, but I thought today for our wedding anniversary, I would show you my husband's quilts. Um, there's something about the uh, it's there's a lot of dynamics in there when your husband starts crowding in on your um, hobby, 
depends on the dynamic if you can share a hobby with your husband sometimes we can't can't even play cards it's too competitive as my mom would say and that's when the fight broke out um but yeah, I love to see when a husband comes in with his wife, and I know that sounds stereotypical, but yeah, that's what it is. When when a guy comes in with his wife and he's really, really interested in stuff, when he helps pick out fabric, uh, when he's looking at the new things, when he asks a lot of questions, usually what I'll do if a couple comes in is um, I'll let, let the wife browse and engage the husband so he doesn't feel bored. Just distract him so you can spend more money. That's another way to look at it. But yeah, it's really, it really pleases me when the husband's like super interested and asks questions and helps pick out colors. And I think that should be encouraged. I have more to say on that, but that should probably go in an essay. So this is one of the, I think this is the first quilt Ron did all on his own. And he's a bit of a nerd. I don't know if you know that. My mom's home laughing. Bit of a nerd. <laughs> Our whole family's a bunch of nerds, mom. We're like closet nerds. So he's a bit of a nerd, so he had to make a Sudoku quilt. And he's one of these quilters who doesn't follow a pattern. Of course not. He has to make his own. Um, some new quilters just jump in like that. They're like, I don't need a pattern. I just want to figure it out. And that's the fun part. So he made a Sudoku quilt. <clears throat> so each one of these, each one of these nine patches of color is laid out like a Sudoku board. And if you go across the rows and columns, none of them are repeated. And I don't know if he quilted this or I did. He might have quilted this himself on the regular machine, a regular Bernina, looked like a walking foot. I don't even know anymore. I can't go ask him. Um, so yeah, this is one of his first quilts. Ta-da! And he was so enamored with that one, he had to do it again, because that had sashing between the blocks. Maybe this was the first one he did, and that was the second. He did these two at the same time. Um, so he did another one with no sashing between the blocks, I think. Oh, no, this is like a quadruple. <laughs> it's a quadruple, quadruple one. So it's got smaller, small, a smaller Sudoku boards, but so it's got four Sudoku boards. And I was practicing, there's a lot of, uh, there was a lot of evidence of unsewing on here. I thought that was pretty funny. He called it unsewing. I sewed this together wrong, now I have to unsew it. Um, but I practiced my free motion quilting and did different designs in all these blocks. Morning, Tanya. Uh, I hope your children are still alive. Um, I tease. Yeah, I quilted this one, so. Notice how he tends to use the darker colors. I like them nice and bright. He likes some bright stuff too, but he tends to go towards the darker stuff. Um, getting really good in here too. This was, he made this out of some fabric from the that we had from the sh in the shop in the early days. And it's an attic window. He likes the attic window stuff. See? But instead of a panel, he used a very large print. Just one of those large, like, scenic prints that you really don't want to cut up because it's so nice. So he did that. So it's, like, really, like, looking out into a forest and not just one particular scene. Uh, I think there is a hanging sleeve on that, so he must have put it in one of the quilt shows. <laughs> this is... I had more technical difficulties yesterday because I wasn't feeling good. I had a sinus headache. Because, of course, the barometer changed very quickly, and my head is like a human barometer. So I was trying to go through all the old photos and find pictures of Ron's quilts. There's more on his device than on mine. Weird. Um, and I was trying to put them all in their own, own folder so I could make like a little slideshow or something. And I went through about five years' worth of photos or more trying to find photos of his quilt. And I said, move these all to this folder. And then when I was all done, I looked at the folder, none of them were there. So I have to do it all over again. Yay. Maybe I'll have it ready for Friday's newsletter. Maybe not, we'll see. Um, but this is one of the other quilts he made. And I did have this hanging up here in the shop over the winter, I think, in the fall. It's, yeah, this is, I'm, I'm holding it sideways, but he did this with a jelly roll, like with all the like blacks and grays. 
and it's just these big old bars of bars of bars of color. He did this two or three times because he came up with that himself uh, based on a quilt that I had done. That's bad size. He likes he likes to do the big quilts. Oh mercy, he's a smart guy. I just think the the aesthetic. My friend says the aesthetic of male quilts is really quite astonishing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's um, a lot of them are usually more angular. They're they're not to generalize, but tend towards the darker colors, less florals. He'll use the florals. He doesn't care. Um, it's really neat though when you look at it. Uh, this one is one of my favorites. If you're familiar with the labyrinth walk quilt, it's a maze. It's nine maze blocks that you put together. It looks really stunning. And he first saw that and he's like, wow, that is right up my alley. I really like this. And then he looks at it, he looks at it, he goes, you can't solve the maze on this puzzle, on this pattern. And he's right. If you look at the pattern, you can't go through the maze like with your finger, you get stuck. That bothered him because as we've established, we're nerds. So he made his own maze pattern and just to make it, just to make it even more realistic, if you've played a lot of computer games, some of the maze things and the games that we like to play are what are, are on what's called an isometric plane. I know it's like that, the, the diagonal viewpoint, which you will see in a minute because he did all these maze blocks on point. Yes. So. You can actually go through the maze on this quilt. This is like half of it. The grandkids really like it. Um, it's got these brown squares at the top with the quilting showing the down arrow. So you enter this way and you can exit this way. Uh, and he did the quilting on this himself. You can see all the pebbles on the ground and the uh, green hedges, which he outlined quilt, quilted. I believe he used a ruler because that's all on the diagonal and it took him forever, but man, he was some pleased with this one. See? And someday we're gonna get our act together and write that into an actual pattern because there's like eight blocks and it's, it's not that complicated when you get the hang of it because, and you can put the blocks in any order as long as, you know, you can still solve the maze, right? That's the point, so it's solve the maze, but you can make your own custom maze. Uh, phew. This is another one he worked on. He was using a technique called slash and insert. Yes, mom, he's had it in quilt shows, but just not ones that have had judging. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do is I'd like to have a quilt show with just my, like the quilts we have in the house. There's like 70-ish enough for a, you know, decent sized quilt show, which I would like to do someday. Mm. Like a quilt show and sample sale because we got a lot of quilts and people say, what do you do with them? Like, I don't know. I do swap them around the walls and stuff. And some of the stuff, some of the quilts that he's made, they're actually still hanging on the walls and I just want to take them down. But anyway, this one was one of the last ones he's actually worked on, which the red and the green and the blue were actually some backing fabrics that we had. And he used the leftover strips to do this slash and insert. It's very modern looking. Very, um, he was, he was just having fun playing with techniques and what he did in each of the negative space areas was practice different quilting techniques. He just outlined the bars that go across and in the gray, he just practiced some quilting and that's what you gotta do. You gotta practice. I noticed he did some really small stippling over here too. Ah, there it is. And uh, the binding's not on it probably because he left that for me to do. And you know how I feel about doing the binding. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, yeah. Um, the other thing I didn't notice, I didn't mention on the other quilts is he got very good at doing a wood grain pattern. So we got to the point where when we were when we first got the long arm and we were practicing and he wanted to uh, get up to speed so he could do some customer quilts. Back in the early days, he did quilts for people, yep. Uh, I let him do a lot of the quilt tops I had standing by. And if you're in the shop for the rest of the month, I have a blue and yellow quilt up with hexagons. 
for my quilt of the month. And in theory, I am writing a blog post about that. I put the the top together and he did the quilting. He did, um, instead of like concentric circles, well, circles that go into spiral. Sometimes you spiral back out, sometimes you just go out straight. He did hexagons. <laughs> and when I point to it and people go, wow, look at that quilting. I'm like, yeah, Ron did it. You just gotta see it. He's a nice guy. Then we'd, we'd fight and argue over, it's my turn to use a long arm. No, it's my turn to use a long arm. <laughs> so we'll see, maybe he might get to it this summer because I'll be taking a break from customer quilts and uh, we need to do some serious maintenance on that thing. Because he does have this, uh, oh, he took some of this out. I did dig around and he has his own sewing bin. So I did dig around and this project's not finished yet. But this is a sun that he did with some improv improvisational piecing. He had an idea and just ran with it. And he's doing a lot of the quilting in different colored threads because he wanted to explore that technique of building up quilt designs with thread, you know, thread painting stuff, that sort of thing. So that's uh, like a landscape with a big sun set. So that's in progress for him. He's, act he's in a few, Facebook, Facebook groups for men quilters and the work they share sometimes is just really, really nice. And I think it should be encouraged, not to the point that the men take over, but that is an essay for another time. So yeah, that's Ron's quilting. So if you have a question and I'm actually not here and uh, Ron and Emma are, are uh, minding the shop for me, if Ron's available, he can actually answer your questions because he knows stuff. He's like me. You can ask him obscure questions too. Like you can do, he can do math in his head faster than I can, and I'm getting pretty good at it. So that's my honey. <sighs> Thirty-two years of marriage. We have known each other almost forever. It's really weird. Mm. Oh, I just realized I forgot to show our iconic wedding photo. We got uh, married at the courthouse. I did wear a white dress, but the best wedding photo we have <laughs> that one of one of our friends took was uh, we were kissing at the end and he had his hands on my butt. So, you know, just normal. He still kisses me like that. So that's that. So happy anniversary to us. Made it another year without strangling each other. So if you noticed, uh, no, you didn't because I didn't show you one, but Ron actually has worked a quite a fair bit with panels. I just realized he did he did one with like the kaleidoscope panel that we had. He did he did recently do that one with the sashing and stuff and I completely forgot about it because of stuff in the closet. Um, so he doesn't mind working with panels. And while I was looking through the panels, I found some really old ones like this Life at the Lake. Life at the Lake. And he's done some stuff with like the one block wonder technique. So today's all about Ron. Well, our birthdays are coming up too. So, so I have some Lake Life panels here. And the reason I'm showing you is because these are some of the oldest ones left in the shop. And I know some people are like to do the one block wonder and try it with panels. And I believe there are six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. They were regular $12 a piece. But if you want to take all of them, they're $5 a piece, but you have to take all of them. So that's 30 bucks. You can try the one block wonder with panels. This pile with the flower show panels, same thing. If you want all of them, they're five bucks a piece, but you got to take all of them. Ta -da! We have matching yardage for this one left too. Um, Sorry, they aren't available on the web. You have to come into the shop because I don't know how to change the website to make it do that. But yeah, if you want to explore the One Block Wonder with panels, I've had two options for you. You just got to take all of them because I got more coming in and I need the room. You know the drill. Anyway, speaking of panels, last week I showed you the panels with the food on them. And it's rather large and it had nine things on them. So I cut some of them apart. So if you wanted to just get a square with French fries, you could. Or if, you know, pizza was your jam. 
no, I don't have any jam, but if pizza was your jam, somebody did buy some of these, uh, bought one of the whole panels and they're making those um, microwavable bowls with them, which I thought was quite clever. So you could do, so these are $2 if you just want one square. And I have the sewing label panels with the little, some of them had some, it was mostly sewing labels, but then they had a few different of these black sayings, chalkboard sayings, and I did cut them all apart. So you can get one of these for a buck. There's four different ones. So if you just want one to make a little wall hanging, you can do that, but you got to come in. So I am not listing them on the website for that little. Essentially, I'm lazy. Some people say efficient, whatever. The other thing, I went around the shop going, what haven't I shown or haven't shown in a while? Um, remember I said we had fusible batting and I got in a big roll and the roll's mostly gone. I think there's a little bit left. Uh, so I had, I knew I had to reorder some, but I'm going to be switching from getting the rolls to getting the bag batting. And for the fusible, I got in a whole pile of the crib size batting. They were out of the stock of other sizes. But the fusible batting is really, you just iron your stuff on the front and the back uh, and you don't have to baste it. This is really, really good if you're doing smaller pieces on your domestic machine because then you don't have to pin them. And I really like it for things like wall hangings or table runners. Uh, Gail Mitchell did the table runner class. She highly recommended it. So the um, baby size, the crib size, 45 by 60 is 20. $20? Yes, it's 20 It's 20 because it's got the fusible on it. But that's a good start for you to be, you know, just try it. See if you like it. I got lots of those. Anyway, the other thing as I was going through my scraps that I recommended, um, this happy hour book, if you have lots of fat quarters or like a fat quarter with a chunk taken out of it and you don't know what to do, I would highly remember a, remember, Yes, English is my first language. I would highly recommend this particular book because it uses up a lot of fat quarters and you do cut them, cut, it's, it's from the same author as the uh, Yellow Brick Road. So there's a lot of cut big chunks, sew them together and then cut them into smaller chunks. But you can sort of, if you have scraps, skip to the next step to where you've got the smaller piece and keep going. I made this quilt. I made this quilt, I made that runner. I know, but you can see like really big blocks, uses a lot, um, and that one up there too. They look really great. See, they look really great in whatever you do. And most importantly, it uses up your stash for you. And she shows you how to make every single quilt in here from baby size all the way up to king. So she just tells you how many fat quarters you need. And honestly, by the time you get up to making like a queen size, like a queen size quilt takes for this one, I look just randomly, 42 fat quarters. Honestly, when you get to that many fat quarters, you get fast and loose with your matching rules. It's like uh, close enough, it can go in. Trust me, you just pick like a, pick a theme or something, like all florals or these are greens and browns and fall colors. And if it's anywhere close, you throw it in, it looks great. Mm -hmm. It really does. Mm. So my last thing is I did clean out the scraps. And this is a bag of fabric I just cannot stand anymore. Um, when you get to the point where you're like, I do not want to sew these fabrics together ever again. If you just, <laughs> I just want to pass them on so I can work with the nice fabric that I have in my stash that I've been avoiding because I've got all these other fabrics in here that I'm tired of looking at. So. I was also thinking maybe we could do sort of like a scrap trade someday. But if you want some scraps, I can hook you up. If you want to get rid of some scraps, I can also hook you up because there's always people coming in who are looking for scraps or they just need a small piece of something. Um, reds are very popular. I <laughs> I had two customers in here yesterday looking for things to match those 90s greens and burgundies. <laughs> So I said to one of them, is like, I should introduce the two of you and you two can just swap amongst yourselves. Oh, that's funny. So yeah, the, um, the remnant bin is huge and is now the scrap bin. This is, I've got two other bags, especially if you want small scraps, 
and a variety of scraps. Like I said, I got you covered. There's a lot in here. Mom, you've seen all of these. You don't need them. Come and take these before my mom comes and visits and takes them home just to save her and her husband. Because I like Carl and I don't want to annoy him. So that's that. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to think of what's coming, what's on the way. I have some fire, new fireside colors in the mail on their way to me. Some odds and ends. And uh, I'm getting the canvas restocked and some backing fabrics restocked. And there's a whole pile of fabric in theory coming as long as they fill my order. Uh, that's kind of a headache. Anyway, so there's that. That's all I have for you this week. Other than that, we're surviving. It's almost the end of the semester for Emma, who is very, very stressed trying to get all of the last minute assignments out of the way. <laughs> I'm trying to finish up a bunch of stuff uh, when I'm not having a sinus headache. So you get your energy back and then the weather changes and goes away again. My kitchen's a mess if you think I'm super organized. Ah. But other than that, everything's fine and normal. <laughs> But I do want to say thank you for the people who've been by and helping me get rid of the sale fabric. Uh, we ran a promotion. I forgot to mention last week in the video, but I did get it in the newsletter. That last Saturday was Worldwide Quilting Day, and I did a uh, come on in, make a purchase, bring a friend, and get a fat quarter, get a free fat quarter. So that went over right really well. Um, and normally, when you finish a bolt in here, I'll, I'll either round down. And you get like the extra or I'll give you something like 10% off uh, on Saturday. If you finished a bolt, you got 20% off because I'm really kind of like of the regular price fabric. So, yeah, I know. So I had a lot of cardboard to take to the recycling is what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, I'm wrapping it up. Appreciate you hanging in there and sticking around so long waiting for me to overcome the... Uh, Technical difficulties, my mom wants to know if anybody's doing the Bonnie Hunter's Hearts for Ukraine quilt along. Answer her comment down below. Maybe post some pictures. Um, my birthday's coming up, so <laughs> I got some plans for that one. That's how it goes in our house. All the holidays are clumped together. It's the wedding anniversary, my birthday, Izzy's birthday, and Ron's birthday is on Easter. So that's how fast everything's coming up. Got to go visit the grandkids in there somewhere spoil the oldest um other than that i guess i'll see you later may you not have an injury this week <laughs> all right i'm out of here bye mom bye tanya bye heidi bye Catherine. who else is in here bye to anybody else who's in here who finally made it i will see you on the flip side